The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome. It's so good to see you all. By my count, it's been since the uh, middle of March since we've been able to gather together in, in the Lord's house. We've been together through other means, and I'm grateful for that, but it's really good to be in the Lord's house. It is Pentecost Sunday, another good reason to uh, be here today. It is the Lord who, uh, the Holy Spirit who calls, gathers, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies us in, in, the, in, in the faith. So, uh, a good day to be back. If you came from downstairs, you probably noticed that um, it's been reconfigured. That's for daycare um, uh, purposes, so that uh, we can have more kids in daycare. That begins uh, uh, tomorrow. We begin with the opening hymn, Holy Spirit, Light Divine. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. It's called an ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the doxology. be with you. Let us pray. 
O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated. <clears throat> the first reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be made known to you, and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 8, we read responsively. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you, can, that you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor? You have given him dominion over the works of your You have put all things under all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, 
If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Sermon text is from the Acts passage and they were amazed and astonished saying are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it then that we hear each of us in his own native language? We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. Have you ever considered how many problems there can be with the process of communication? So much can go wrong. These masks, very good idea. They don't help much with public speaking. Zoom and the like, wonderful tools, especially now, but also fraught with hazards, right? I was invited to the Zoom meeting of our first grade class uh, this last week. Was that ever a hoot? Multiple kids talking at once, changing their virtual backgrounds, turning themselves upside down or sideways, distorting their images. One liked to put her eyeball right up close to the camera, so that's all you saw of her was her eye. One of the boys saw this and did the same. He pushed his nose up and did it with his nostril. So many potential problems with communication and distractions. One of the frustrations I have is not, no matter how much you try to communicate, it's never enough. Because people don't always check their emails, don't open the letter from church, read the bulletin insert or the newsletter article or whatever, and then you get scolded for not communicating. Or maybe there's background noise. The soda machine cycles on during a meeting. At wedding receptions, once the music starts, I catch about every third or fourth word of the conversations I'm having and find myself smiling a lot, nodding in agreement to who knows what's being proposed to me or said. So much can go wrong. Now add to that the challenge is if the sender and the receiver speak different languages. Add to that the challenge if the sender is a Christian trying to witness to the message of Jesus Christ and him crucified on a cross, risen from the dead, to someone who's never before heard that. Add to that the challenge of our hearts which are by nature cold, hostile to the gospel message. It's a miracle that anyone believes in Jesus with all that in mind. 
And that's precisely the point of Pentecost. Faith is a miracle, not a decision. It's a miracle given us by God, worked by the Holy Spirit through the message, but also in the hearts and minds of the, of the sender and the hearts of, and minds of the receiver. In our text, the disciples are back in Jerusalem. They're still lying low after the resurrection of Jesus, not wanting to uh, gather uh, a lot of attention to themselves. Jerusalem is now observing the festival of weeks, also called Pentecost, 50 days after Passover, which celebrates the completion of the spring harvest. What this means is that Jerusalem once again is filled with pilgrims from all over from Mesopotamia, Judea, Asia, Egypt, Pamphylia, and so on. Suddenly, something remarkable happens, astonishing really, mysterious. There's a rushing wind, tongues of fire. Instantaneously, the followers of Jesus find their voices and the courage to use them. Suddenly, they can speak fluently in languages they never learned, they never studied, and are proclaiming the gospel with crystal clarity. A miracle of miracles, people are understanding the message and believing it. Luke wants us to know that the whole world was there in Jerusalem with all its marvelous diversity, the racial, cultural, linguistic, and they would soon be going back home, which means God is now sending the gospel out with these people to their home nations. Disparate people are starting to coagulate into the body of Christ, the, the communion of saints. They have hardly anything else in common other than the Christian faith and holy baptism. And that's quite enough. All that happened because the Holy Spirit was working through the message in the hearts and minds of the sender and the hearts and minds of the receiver. He's working on both sides of the equation. Those proclaiming the gift uh, were gifted in turn with foreign languages, but also with the gospel. Those listening to the disciples were gifted with hearing the gospel in their own tongues but also with hearts and minds that the Holy Spirit had opened up in order to receive this message, to understand it and believe it. Today, God is still doing what he's always been doing. Today, the Holy Spirit is still working through the word on both sides of the equation. Many pastors, before they begin a sermon, will silently pray the words of Psalm 19. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. He's praying the Holy Spirit to shape and choose and edit his words in such a way that they're his words and that they're pleasing to him, good, true. But the work of Holy Spirit is also on the receiving side. In Romans 10, Paul writes, faith comes from hearing the message. And that's, more about, that's, more, that's about more than just sound waves rattling the eardrums. It's about heart and mind making sense of it all, apprehending it for oneself. That cannot happen without the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, the man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. And again, 1 Corinthians 12, no one can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, among Luther's most important words are these. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or come to him. The Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, gathered me, enlightened me with his gifts. Pentecost is about the miracle of the message of the gospel being sent 
and received successfully. So in the general prayer of the church, we often pray, grant to your church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors to preach your word with power. We pray for those who are sending, and then we pray for those who are receiving. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Holy Spirit is working on both sides of that equation. Because of human frailty, because of sin and rebellion, a lot can go wrong with communication. Often does. But when it all works, when the message of Jesus Christ is faithfully communicated and faithfully received by faith, give thanks because that's a little miracle taking place. Wherever there is faith, today, here, right now, wherever there is faith, it is evidence that the Holy Spirit has been working on both sides of the equation and in the message of the gospel. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We now confess this faith of ours, words of the Apostles' Creed, Page one said, uh, you don't have pages. Please stand to confess for faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers we pray for Wayne Zilmer, um, a nephew of Stephen Zilmer, who's in the hospital in Marshfield. And we pray for uh, the family of Wayne's wife, Shay. Um, they were involved in a car accident and Shay did not survive. We pray also for Ken Schwantis. Um, he was here last night, which was really neat to see. For Wendy Wilson, Rianne Wagner, Agnes Thurow in hospice care, Marge Gecki, Bob Wheeler, John Block in hospice care. For Jim Strage, Ruth Jones in hospice, Patricia Fox in hospice, and Carol Marshall. We pray, we pray in thanksgiving for Richard, brother-in-law of Nancy Bogren, who had a very good report following a year-long battle with cancer. We also pray in thanksgiving for the 53rd wedding anniversary of Jerry and Judy Coonley on June 3rd, and for the 60, 51st wedding anniversary of Pastor and Fern Techtmeyer today. We also pray in celebration of the 85th birthday of uh, Pastor Techtmeyer on Thursday. And we pray for Josh DeNoyer, who is part of the National Guard and has been sent up to Minneapolis to help quell the, 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 the riots up there. Let us pray for the world, the church, and all those in need. That the rulers of the world, and especially this country, be granted wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that there would be justice in the streets and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, that all who make and enforce the laws would do so with integrity and honor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, that all who protect us from our enemies, especially the armed forces, the police, firefighters, National Guard, may be preserved from all harm. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who plan evil may be frustrated in their ways. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord that all who teach the children would do so with patience and creativity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
that our children, especially the unborn, would be preserved from all harm and danger, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that those who live in darkness may be drawn to the light of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we would be wise stewards of all the gifts entrusted to our care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Holy Spirit would open our hearts and minds and our ears, that we may hear the word of God and believe it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. That the Holy Spirit would open our mouths, that we may confess God's word boldly, winsomely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Holy Spirit would open our hands, that we may be servants to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Holy Spirit would come to those enmeshed in sin and its consequences and reveal to them the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord. that all those who are ill, especially those we've named, may rest confidently under God's grace and the care of skilled and compassionate medical workers. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, that all who grieve, especially the Zomer family, may look forward with sure and certain faith to the resurrection of the saints of God and life everlasting. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, that all who celebrate the Kunlis and Techmeyers may praise and thank the Lord for his generosity and grace. Let us pray to the Lord that all who are isolated from family and friends may find comfort in the fellowship of saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord in communion with all the saints on earth, we bring our prayers before you, O Lord, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Following the service, we'll dismiss row by row from, from the rear um, pews forward. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
joining me today. This week we are celebrating a very special day, the day of Pentecost. On this day, we celebrate God's gift to us, the Holy Spirit. In the reading today from Acts 2, verse 5 says, There were devout men living in Jerusalem from every country. Later in this passage, in verses 8 and 9, we hear that these people from all over the world spoke different languages. If these people were from all over the world, how did they get to Jerusalem? So today, I want to talk about transportation. How we get from one place to the other. So if I was going to go to my grandma's house, how would I get there? I might use these. These are my walking shoes. I could walk to my grandma's house. Would I get there fast? No. It would be a slow trip, but I would get to see lots of things and people along the way. What if I use these? These are my car keys. I can go pretty far in my car, and I could stop and see lots of places and people, and it would be a little bit faster than walking. What if my grandma lived across the ocean? How could I get there? Might have to wear one of these. Know what this is? This is a life preserver. Where do we wear life preservers? On boats, that's right. If my grandma lived across the ocean, I could take a boat. What if I want to go across the ocean quickly? I could take an airplane. That's right. Well, the people that were in Jerusalem didn't have cars or boats or airplanes. They only had their feet and animals to help them get from one place to the other. On this special day of Pentecost, the Bible tells us that Jerusalem was full of people that had walked there. They heard a loud noise like wind rushing through the room. Then they heard their own language being spoken by the disciples. God had sent his helper, the Holy Spirit, to be with the disciples. What did the disciples do next? They told the people about Jesus. And what did those people do? They walked, walked, walked back to their home countries and they told all the people around them about Jesus. Well, what did the disciples do? Do you think they just stayed in Jerusalem? No way. They walked, walked, walked all over the world and told everybody about Jesus and how much he loved them and died for their sins. What an amazing journey the disciples got to take. Guess what? You have the Holy Spirit in you as well. And he will help you tell others the amazing story of how much Jesus loves them too. So, what are you going to do, use to share Jesus' story? Your phone? Your shoes? Your car? A boat? An airplane? 